I'm Pastor Renee Merriman, and welcome to Liberty Church Online. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I was called into ministry October 24th, 2008. And by January 2009, we started having home church services. And uh, by spring, I had linked with the Church of the Nazarene. And by summer, I was licensed with them. I was given a local ministry license because they saw what I've been doing with my life for many years. And I enrolled immediately that summer into Nazarene Bible College. If you haven't heard of the Church of Nazarene, I'm now an independent pastor, but they were started more than 100 years ago by two Methodist ministers and two others from the holiness movement backgrounds. They have six or seven accredited colleges. So with the student loan and a federal grant, I was able to begin college. And currently I'm enrolled in Trinity of Florida where Billy Graham happened to have gradu graduated. I didn't know that when I first enrolled, but anyway, here I am today hoping to have my Bachelor in Science of Pastoral Ministries. Uh, we had a home church for many, many, many years. The Nazarene Church didn't have a church to, to, put, to place me at because their ministers basically stay in the same place for decades. So we eventually sold our home and moved to be closer to family. And uh, my husband had a terrible bout with cancer and surgery and a long time it took to recuperate from that radiation, but praise God he's doing well today. And I get called here and there to preach at various churches that are not too far away as what they call pulpit supply. So meanwhile, we're continuing Liberty Church as an online ministry right now. And uh, we are doing two sermons a month, but weekly live, if you find me on my Facebook page under Renee Merriman, we're doing a weekly at five o'clock Wednesday Bible study. And right now we're going through the book of Romans. Last year, we, we uh, just plugged away every week until we finally went through the complete book of Acts. So anyway, today's sermon is called Walk in Love. Now, do you remember when you first fell in love? You know, that elated feeling you got that everything was glowing, everything is bright and beautiful and sparkling, and you just felt great like you were walking on air? Well, when I first fell in love with my husband, I did not know I was in love with him. My friends knew it before I knew it. In fact, a neighbor kept saying, Renee, you're on cloud nine. You are in love with Rick. And I said, I am not. Why do you keep saying I'm in love with Rick? I'm not involved. I don't want to get involved with anybody right now. I had it up to here. It's going to take me a long time to trust again. And, you know, he says, Renee, I know you are in love with Rick. And I said, he intrigues me. That's it. You know, he, I'm interested in him. He's so smart. He knows so many different things. And he's Aside from being an awesome musician that records his own music, I mean, he can fix everything. And uh, that's how he supported himself as a carpenter like Jesus did. And anyway, a few months later, there was no denying it. We were a couple, and uh, my husband, one of his sisters said, you two are in a pink cloud. And yeah, we were. It was, it's true, and there's no denying it. We were inseparable then, and 22 years later, we're still inseparable, okay? Now, do you know that God loves us with the same type of long-lasting devotion and intensity? God wants us to be closely connected to Him as He is connected to us. In fact, He says in the book of James that if we draw close to Him, then He will draw close to us. And that's in James chapter 4, verse 8. God shows us over and over in the Bible many ways where he likes to communicate with his people and he wants to be in a close relationship with them. Do you know that the scriptures say that God chose us to be a part of his family before the foundation of the earth? Well, that is why we should strive to be holy people because God is holy, right? He says, be holy, for I am holy. And we should live before him in love. We should show love for one another because Jesus will know who his true disciples are by the love they have amongst themselves. So are you showing love to one another? 
If you're not, then Jesus say you're not his true disciples. We have to show love. So God shows us, he created us, and he desires to give every one of us, each one of us, the gift of eternal life. That is our inheritance. I mean, if you're a parent and you want to make up a will for your children, you can wish them your jewelry, your money in the bank, your furniture, paintings, whatever you have. But guess what? Two things are promised in this world, and that's dying, right? Death and taxes. That was said to be funny, but what's not so funny is that one day there will be a judgment day. And those who are not following God will not be in his kingdom. The kingdom is the gift that God gives us. And there is nothing more valuable in this world than living forever in a world free from sickness and death. You can't take anything to heaven. Not a painting, not a piece of art, not your money in the bank. You're not going to take it with you. It will be worthless to you the day you die. And you will be waiting asleep in death to the day that we are all resurrected. So anyway, God's word says that we, in him we have redemption through his blood, meaning Christ's shed blood, of course. We have the forgiveness of sins according to the richness of his grace. And this is found in uh, chapter one of the book of Ephesians. This, of course, means that when Jesus died a sacrificial death, he did this so that we who believe in him could have eternal life. But we have to humbly repent of our sin. In him, the Bible says, we also have obtained an inheritance. Now, I'm going to read you a direct quote from Ephesians chapter 1. Now, this is when Paul wrote the Ephesians. And he said, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. And, and the, he says, he continues and says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So thanks to God's love, we have salvation. We have promise of a better life to come, a life free of sickness, as I said, of death, free from worry and stress, free from war, crime, poverty, hatred, and evildoers, people who seek to take things away from you that are yours and not theirs. People who are jealous of you want to harm you by telling lies about you. All these ungodly people, if they have not repented on Judgment Day, they will be removed from your sight. Okay, the Bible promises that there's going to be a day of judgment where the sheep will be separated from the goats. Thanks to God's love, though, we have salvation, the promise of the better life. And uh, I tell you, we cannot escape the fact that the day of judgment is coming. Jesus is right now, my friends, sitting at the right hand of God. You can have comfort knowing that God sees all. And a direct quote from the prophet Jeremiah, Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him? Says the Lord, do I not fill heaven and earth? Says our Lord, you cannot hide from God. You cannot run from God. He is everywhere. He sees everything. He knows everything you have done and he knows everything you're about to do. But he gives you an, a heart that could repent if you wanted to. You know, the Apostle Paul reminds us that our salvation comes from God's grace. He says, quote, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. 
In the next verse, Paul goes on to remind us that our salvation is not by our works, so that none of us can boast, the Bible says. You can't say, well, uh, I wrote out a big check for several thousand dollars for our local food pantry, and I stood there and I held the check, and they took a picture of me and they put it in the paper. I've seen that. No, that is not going to buy you a step into God's kingdom. Because God said, if you don't have love for one another, and especially for your own family, he said, you're worse than a pagan. That's what he said. We're supposed to love each other and demonstrate love and care for one another. So anyway, God said, so as I said, it's not by our works so that none of us can boast. None of us can brag about any good we do and it's by God's love, his grace, and our faith in him. So it's kind of like a combo factor, right? It's God's love, his grace, his mercy, and our faith in him, and our humble hearts that have repented for our past sins that will bring us to the promised land. Now, doesn't that make you happy? Doesn't that make you joyful? Doesn't that make you just love God? He says, if you repent, I will forgive you for your sins. So while we're still alive, we need to repent of our sins since the Bible says we have all sinned. Now Jesus paid the supreme price for our sins. And Romans, as I said earlier, it's in Romans 3, 28, where his word says that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's expectations. But we know that we can rejoice because God's word also says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, now read this for yourself in Romans chapter five, verse eight, while we were still sinners, and I quote, Christ died for us. So we should walk in love for God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said that many will come against us. He said even members of your own family will, will, will come against you. And he said we'll be despised and hated because of our love for him. But that's okay. Don't be discouraged. Keep your faith and keep walking in love. So we should walk in love, continue to walk in love, and let the world see Christ in you, my friends. Let the world see Jesus in you. Because the Bible says if we live in Christ, then he will live in us. And we will emulate goodness and kindness, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, hope, patience, kindness, goodness. All these things we will emulate. All these attributes. So remember that God first loved us. And that is why we are here today, my friends. John the Baptist said the father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So have you asked Jesus to forgive you for your sins or do you think you're too far gone? Because believe me, there is nothing new under the sun. God who made you wants you to be in his kingdom and that is why he is patient. He's waiting for you just to say, God, I'm sorry. Jesus, please reign in my heart. Holy Spirit, please wash me clean. Lord, take my life into your hands and use me. Be the clay, let him be the potter. That's all you got to do. And he will forgive you because he loves you. And as I said earlier, he wants everyone to be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, so say, God, Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus. Take the, the reins of my life. Give the reins to God. He wants to bring you to his kingdom, to that beautiful place where we never have to 
be sad anymore or cry. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So let me just share the scripture with you. In John 17, 3, Jesus said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's what he wants. That's all. So walk in love as Jesus walked in love. He walked right to the cross for you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You know what you got to do, my friends? Just do it and be blessed. Amen.